Hello guys, welcome back. I'm sure most of you know that Glock went on a long hiatus prior to 2014. And when Glock finally announced G42, let's just say it was not what most of us expected. It is not like nothing came out of the Glock's factory during this time. The Austrian firearm manufacturer kept on releasing new generations. However, what could be truly considered a new or different design was a single stack 45 ACP Glock 36, which was released back in 2000. You see, back when no official news was coming from Glock, it was speculated that the firearm manufacturing giant was working on concealed carry, which turned out to be right. But what left the fans in a bit of a pickle was the caliber it chambered in. Most of us were hoping that it would be something chambered in 9mm. So you can imagine how most of us felt when it turned out to be a 380. I have nothing against 380 ACP, but you know just as much as I do that it is no match for a powerful 9mm. Fast forward a few years, and we witness one of the best concealed carry in 9mm developed by Sig Sauer, followed by Glock 48. So the question is whether Glock 42 makes sense in the world of P365 and G48. Well, that is why I'm making this video after spending a lot of time with this handgun. Let's take a detailed look at the gun and find out whether it is a compelling purchase in 2023. Concealed Carry You see, most of the backlash that Glock 42 got was based on its caliber. But when things cooled down and fans actually tried their hands at it, the handgun started to gain ground. Why, you ask? It was because of its size, which as it turned out, Glock knocked it out of the park. By the time Glock 42 was released, the popular pistols in Micro Compact included Smith & Wesson's Bodyguard and Caltech P3AT. Ruger LCP was also one of these popular handguns. While all of these handguns offered very compact sizes, they came at the expense of performance. It does not take rocket science to realize that the more you trim the gun, the more challenging it gets to maintain a proper grip. The point is, these guns do not make ideal personal defense weapons. Glock 42 addressed it by delivering a design that struck the right balance. It was not as compact as the guns I mentioned, but it was still compact enough for concealed carry. Naturally, it made the gun easier to shoot and accurately hit the target. Plus, the light caliber made things even easier, owing to reduced recoil. Now that years have passed since the release of this gun, it still remains one of the best micro-compact handguns. If you ask me one reason to get this pistol in 2023, the optimal size will be my top reason to make the recommendation. Grip and Texturing I have found the grip of the G42 to be very comfortable. To be honest, it feels a little different than you might expect from a Glock. It does not have the characteristic blocky feel, but offers a roundish and slim back strap that provides a very comfortable and solid grip. I think it goes without saying that the grip is not very modular, which should not come as a surprise given the size of the gun. While the grip on this handgun is incredible, it still has some caveats, which are common with micro compact pistols. You will still find your pinky hanging, but those with smaller hands might find enough real estate to rest their pinkies on the base plate of the magazine. Whatever the case with pinkies might be, you will get solid control over the gun. The gun also has a relatively small trigger, and you may experience a little bit of knuckle from the trigger guard. But again, it is not something that companies can do much about because of its small size. As for the texturing, it is not too good, but it is not too bad as well. I mean, you still get enough aggression to provide a decent grip, but it is not Gen 5 good. You get my point, don't you? In simple words, you will get a good grip at most times, but the slide may slide around if your hands become sweaty. Controls Moving on, the controls on Glock 42 are rather basic. You get a mag release and a slide stop, which I think you would appreciate. The mag release on G42 is standard Gen 4, which is larger than Gen 3, hence easier to press and reach. You can access it without breaking the grip on the Micro Compact gun. However, you will have to relax the grip a bit, if you have large hands, for the magazine to fall down. People with small hands should not experience this issue though. As for the slide stop, it is not ambidextrous, but it sits further back on the gun than most slides. Right-handed shooters should have no problem with it. As for left-handed shooters, well guys, 
the gun was released back in 2014. What did you expect? Trigger Like the grip on this thing, the trigger also feels a bit different from what you might be used to with Glocks. It has very little take up and that also has a creep in it. Most other Glock models have lighter take up. However, with G42, you will feel a bit of take up before you reach that creep and start to fill a wall. A rolling brake follows it, but this brake is farther than other Glock models. Trigger pull is slightly downscaled compared to its 9mm counterparts. I'm not sure how to exactly put the feel of this trigger, but I think saying it is a bit different might do for now. As for the reset, it closely resembles other Glocks and offers a positive reset. But as soon as it resets right to the wall, the rolling brake begins to fill in. To put it in a nutshell, I'm not a fan of this trigger, but I think I can live with it. Shooting Performance The shooting performance on the Glock 42 is incredible to say the least. However, it features the same plastic sights, so I'm tired of mentioning how subpar they are. I mean, the guns that cost almost two-thirds of this gun come with better sights straight out of the factory. Anyways, talking about sights on Glock is like banging your head against the wall, so let's move on. As for the shooting, it is fun, to say the least, especially if it comes from a 9mm. I'm not kidding, fire a magazine with a 9mm and then switch to this pistol. You will almost feel like cheating because that is how smooth it is. I know most of you are wondering, so what? After all, it is a 380, which is true. But friends, let me tell you that it is the smoothest of all the 380s that at least I have shot. You may compromise on firepower, but the minimum recoil and virtually non-existent muzzle rise allow you to hit dead center every time you take a shot. It almost makes you forget about how cheap the plastic sights feel. As for ammunition, it is not as forgiving as other models in Glock's lineup, but you will likely not run into any issues no matter how cheap the quality of rounds is. However, I would recommend you give a test run to ammo on the range before trusting it with your life. Should you buy it in 2023? Let's come down to the most important question, and frankly, I cannot give a straight answer to it. For me, it's a straight no, which is probably because I like the firepower of 9mm more, but someone who has not fired or owned a gun ever before in one's life may think differently. For people with some prior experience of handling guns, a 9mm may not be an issue, but it may be a bit too much for someone just starting out, leaving one with 380 ACP. I know it is not as powerful as a 9mm, but it can still make a decent personal defense caliber. The only real caveat with this gun is the lack of adequate magazine capacity, which may be a deal breaker for most people. I mean, 6 plus 1 is subpar to say the least. Yes, you can use extended magazines, but it takes away the entire purpose of concealed carry. To sum it up, it is a major compromise, only second to price, which, if I'm being lenient, is not affordable, especially for a 380 ACP. If you can work around these compromises, sure, go for it. The G42 would not let you down with any other aspect. That is all for this video. I hope it has been a fun and informative video. Let me know if I have missed anything in the comments down below and stay connected with the channel. As always, I will see you in the next one.